Thank you all so very much for joining us here for another Kingdom Conversations. And we are especially excited today because our special guest is more than just a guest, the one that started the show, who wrote the book, The Man of the Hour, Brother Jerry Colbert is here with us today. And we're excited to have you here. Thank you so much, sir. It is so good to see you. So good to see you. Amen. Yes. So let's just go ahead. Let's just get started. Let's get mm -hmm. right in. Um, for those who may not know, as we are moving in this kingdom awakening, that some things happened <laughs> with your health about a month ago at this point. And one thing that was very clear in our conversations as a church, as a staff, your message to us was keep going, right? Keep going, keep pressing. Um, don't let anything stop what's happening because really this kingdom awakening is too important, right? You expressed that to me on several occasions as I've been like, hey, let's just, let's take a second, let's breathe, let's woosah. And uh, you've done nothing but continually press this out over and over and over again. My question to you is, why is that? What is it about this book, about the message, about the movement of Kingdom Awakening that is truly pertinent to what's happening today? Because I think people need to understand why there's such a sense of urgency. Well, it's good to sit here and converse with you again, Orlando. Um, you know, Jesus made the statement that <clears throat> in explaining one of the parables that he spoke of in reference to the word, he said, when this word of the kingdom has been preached to all the nations as a witness, then the end will come. Mm -hmm. And he also, in the word, it goes on to say that when this word or this message of the kingdom has been preached, the enemy comes immediately to snatch that word because uh, it hasn't fallen on, on good ground. Mm. When I think about those things and I think about what God is doing today in the body of Christ, uh, I really believe that the finger of the Holy Spirit is on uh, the message of kingdom. And I believe that because <clears throat> we're, in the, we're in this dispensation of grace or dispensation of the Holy Spirit, or time that God is dealing with us through grace, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. But that's leading us into the dispensation of the kingdom. So I believe now more than any time before, uh, God is turning us toward his intention, which is kingdom, hmm. kingdom awareness, kingdom understanding, kingdom purpose, kingdom demonstration, kingdom character, kingdom finance, kingdom government, so that we can prepare ourselves for um, the literal kingdom of God that's going to be established on this earth, Jesus Christ being the king of that kingdom. That's that's profound. That's that's a that's a lot of um, of weight, a lot of meat to that. Uh, I want to dive into that because I think it's important also to look at with everything you've said of the importance of why this kingdom awakening is pertinent. It is um, you know almost even time sensitive, right? The concept of and you said on your book on the cover it says your part in the battle of the ages. Kingdom Awakening, your part in the battle of the ages. So as we talk about this, and again, sticking with that sense of urgency to say, no, we got to keep on pressing this out. For those who are looking at this, what will you have them know as to why it's important for them? Because we have leaders here, we talk about things in kingdom, but just as a, as a viewer, as a person who has, um, you know, seemingly no stake in all of this, one thing I get from your book is, no, you do have a stake in this. You do have a role in this. You have a part in the battle of the ages. Uh, why is it important for the kingdom awakening to be pressed out in that way, not just towards leaders? Why are, they, why are the people so important in this? You know, I don't know everything about the kingdom, but the more I learn, the more I realize uh, how important it is. <clears throat> when we 
start talking about uh, the kingdom of God and praying that the kingdom of God would come and seeking first or making top priority the kingdom of God. Um, when we begin to really embrace kingdom from a demonstration perspective, um, and we realize that when we preach the kingdom, we're actually doing warfare against the kingdom of darkness. Hmm. And the enemy hates that. Um, but it's necessary for every believer to tap into the kingdom concept, get kingdom revelation, because when this kingdom of, of God is established, Jesus being the king of that kingdom, then the enemy is destroyed. Mm. Satan has a kingdom. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God so that he would destroy the works of the devil or destroy the kingdom of darkness. Then he makes the statement that, you know, he's going to build his church, his body, his ecclesia. And he says that the gates of hell shall not prevail yeah. against his body, against the church. But why, why, why that terminology? Well, because as we demonstrate the kingdom the way he did mm -hmm. with signs, wonders, and miracles, as we press forward in bringing the influence of the kingdom of God to the affairs of men, then... Mm -hmm. The kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan uh, is threatened by that. And they began to war yeah. against the kingdom of God. But we're assured that the gates of hell shall not prevail. We will prevail against the kingdom of darkness and the gates that have held people in bondage. Um, so that they would not hear the gospel and come out of the kingdom of darkness and be translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Mm. That's good. And that plays out on an individual level, right? Absolutely. Every believer, as they begin to embrace the kingdom, um, the Bible tells us that we will become the manifested or revealed mm. sons of God. Well, we get all these believers here in body of Christ here. Uh, is, that, is that the manifestation of the sons of God? I believe that the manifestations of the sons of God will happen when believers embrace their authority, yeah. when believers can begin to walk in what Jesus said about casting out demons and healing the sick, when believers begin to demonstrate the power of God, because the kingdom of God is not just in word but in demonstration of power. And when we begin to see more and more believers do that, then we'll begin to see the gates of hell beginning to erode, beginning to be pushed back, and the light of the kingdom of God begin to shine. So isn't that, you know, because we're talking about this awakening, and I know that some people feel like, hey, all this kingdom stuff is, is great, and that's what you're here for, right? You're here to keep us in check with that, to remind us of that on a weekly basis. Um, you know, you we, we, we need to cast out a demon, we call Brother Jerry. We need somebody to come and sing us into the third heaven, we call up Troy. Uh, we need somebody to come lay hands on us, we have a deliverance team for that. Uh, when we talk about my part in the battle of the ages, right, my part in this kingdom, the importance of that playing out on an individual basis. What is the, the the disconnect there, right? Why? What is it about me that's so important when it comes to kingdom? Well, what amazes me is that, you know, as mankind, God was so mindful of us mm -hmm. that he cared so much about us and that he made a way for us to be brought back into relationship with him yeah. through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and his shed blood. So, um, you know, the scriptures say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Well, we are important to God. And when he established this earth and he told man to rule it, man gave it away 
and Satan began to rule over it because God is in control. He's not going to let the enemy, a lesser being, he's not going to let a, a fallen angel dictate what's going to happen to this world. So, he, so God created a... Um, God created a legal way for him to not violate his own righteousness and enter um, into the man that he made in order to bring redemption. Thank God for Jesus. We praise the glory of his grace that's made us accepted in the beloved um, and given us redemption through his blood. So he sent Christ to redeem us, bring us back, redeem, bring us back to where we were. And where we were was he gave us authority to rule. Yeah. He gave us dominion over the earth. He gave us authority to rule. And that authority was given to our enemy based on our disobedience. But Jesus came yeah. to reestablish that authority and to show that in obedience to God, that he could take back and bring us back to what God originally intended. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Christ, we see a man obeying God and God sanctioning everything that he did. Yeah. So God is a God of generations. He's never been satisfied with just, he wasn't a, he wasn't a God of Abraham. He was a God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Mm -hmm. He's a God of generations. Yeah. Uh, God wants every one of us, every one of his creations, to walk in the fullness of what he created us to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, imagine this world without the influence of Satan and, and the attacks of evil. Imagine this world where we walk in righteousness and we... we, we release kingdom authority yeah. in everything that we do. You know, we serve an amazing God. Yeah, we do. Who does amazing things. And even as bad as our world looks sometimes, and even as bad as uh, things appear, you can always decide which way you want to look at it. We can look at all of the evil in the world, or we can look at the good that God has done. We can look at all the sickness and disease, or we can look at how God heals. We can look at all of the things that the enemy has done in this world, or we can look at the things that God has has birthed in this world. You can look at the you can look at the the skies and say, look at all of the rain clouds and how dark it is. But then you can also look at the sunshine and say, look how bright God has made things. So I've chosen to look at what God has done and not focus so much on what the enemy has done. And when I focus on what the enemy has done, it's so that I can bring change through what God has done. Yeah. That's pretty profound. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. It, it, it's important, even as you spoke that out just now, of that redeeming nature of the work that God is doing, right? To bring us back to that and to your point of, he gave us power. He endowed us with power and authority on the onset. And so we're getting back to that. So the, the, the true way to really walk out this kingdom mandate is to do just that. It's what we were created for in the first place, to bring him glory and to uh, actually press out this authority. And I, I want to dive into that right after this break to, to us to really kind of get into this whole point of, again, our role, our part in the Battle of the Ages. Hey, I just want to spend a minute uh, with you, encouraging you to get this book, Kingdom Awakening by uh, Pastor Jerry. Uh, this book is, uh, first of all, a lifetime of revelation from the Lord to Jerry. But what I love about it is it's, it's about a half scripture. It, you're, going to, you're going to get a real tour through the word of God and what it says about the kingdom. And then on every chapter, there's these reflection questions. They're going to challenge you uh, to really think about where you're at with the Lord, where you're at as far as the kingdom is concerned, and uh, it will bless you. It will bring to mind what your gifts are, what your role is. It'll encourage you to be an ambassador as we've been talking, 
and uh, it, it will encourage your walk. So I, I encourage you to get this at Amazon, uh, Kingdom Awakening, your part in the battle of the ages. And let's uh, get more and more and more of uh, the church in the battle. Thank you all so much for sticking around with us. We really appreciate you. Uh, again, to Brother Jerry, so glad to have you back today. And we're excited for what's happening now moving forward. We just got done talking about um, just diving into this concept of, of what the individual's part is in this, right? Like I said before, why not just let Brother Jerry, the apostle, come in and do all of the kingdom work? Because um, that's, that's what people are used to, right? Uh, whether it's deacons in the church, whether it's the elders, presbytery, um, you know, the apostle, the prophet, all of the people that we recognize as individuals who are, are constantly working, doing this work and pressing it out. One thing about your book that I believe is really profound is that it's not just meant for the leader of the church to read, right? It's meant for average everyday people and the leaders and the people who are seasoned and somebody who just came into the fold, right? What is it that is so pressing for that individual, for people? Because I want people to hear your heart on this, right? And to, to step into that awakening and to be aware of what's happening and what am I supposed to do every day? And so I love what you said before of, hey, God's redeeming us. Right. But what is he redeeming us to? If you could step into that a little bit further, because I think that's important. What is God redeeming us to? Because oftentimes we get stuck at kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom uh, of, of God in light. Right. But what was the thing he's redeeming us to? If we were if we didn't start in the kingdom of darkness, what do we what do we what, are, what was the starting point? Mm hmm. This is a pretty loaded question. I think maybe the way to answer that. So look at the book. It says, Kingdom Awakening, your part in the battle of the ages. So this whole kingdom message deals with a warfare mm -hmm. that we all step into when we accept Christ as our Savior. Yeah. Period. You don't opt in. You can't you, look, you can't you can't join the church. You actually have to be born into this new kingdom. And when you're born into the kingdom of God, you're born again, as Jesus Christ says, you actually step into a position of uh, authority, whether you know it or not. Mm. And you are, the Bible talks about, about us being soldiers, you know, where we put on our helmet of salvation and shoes of redemption and sword of the spirit and yeah. just the word of God. And, and, and the Bible tells us we need to, to do warfare as good soldiers. Hmm. War, a good warfare as good soldiers. So, think of that terminology. Yeah. All of that talks about battling, talks about war, talks about fighting, talks about uh, stepping into a place where uh, God has called us to war against the enemy of God. <laughs> and you know what? Whether you like it or not, there is an enemy, and he's warring against you. Mm -hmm. um, and as he wars against you, God has given us the authority to win. But if you don't know that, you don't even know that you're in a battle. You don't even know that this is a, a kingdom fight. And I was listening to some of the things you said, and, and I think we've confused things. Mm. We think um, God did not raise us up to be religious. He didn't raise us up to be churchgoers. Yeah. And, and because you go to church every day, because you you deal with um, the choirs and all those kind of things, that doesn't affect the enemy of God at all. Mm. This whole thing about the battle of the ages is we have to recognize who our enemy is. Yeah. It's not other church folk and all that stuff. It's not choir members we argue with. It's not members that we don't get along with. It's the devil. And we have to come to a place where we realize that we're in a warfare and this warfare is with a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. And the only ones that can war against this spiritual beings is, is the ones that God has raised up 
in the body of Christ to do that. Every believer is under attack by the devil, whether they know it or not. And God has given us all power to war against the enemy of God, against the devil, who is our enemy. He's given us the power to do that. And most believers don't even realize it. They don't even realize that they're in a spiritual battle. Yeah. And this spiritual battle was going on before we were born again. We just stepped into it. We inherited this battle. But God knows <laughs> that we win. Yeah. But every believer has that assignment. Mm -hmm. So whether you're fighting or not, somebody's fighting against you. That's good. Whether you're winning or not, somebody is beating on you on a constant basis in the spiritual realm. So you got to wake up. You got to wake up to the fact that you're a child of God. You got to wake up to the fact that God has called you into the family. You got to wake up to the fact that God wants you to, to war for the kingdom yeah. against the kingdom of darkness. Everything that Jesus did was to destroy the works of the devil. And here's what he told us. Now you go and do the same thing. Yeah. Go and destroy the works of of the devil. How do I do that? By laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, preaching expect acceptable year of the Lord, carrying the gospel or the good news of Christ and the good news of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Every believer was given that assignment. We call it the Great Commission. And we think it's just winning souls. It's more than just winning souls. It's doing warfare yeah. against the enemy of God. You know, it's uh, interesting to hear that because the thing that comes to mind for me is uh, even looking at what we do every Sunday as self-defense classes, right? Like, what does it look like for us to accept, as you said, the reality that we're in a battle, whether we like it or not, uh, whether we like that the country, the U.S. is at war with other countries, it's the reality. And sometimes uh, there, are, there are times where it's like, hey, there's a draft that we got to do because we need bodies for this fight if we're going to win this thing. And I believe that as I even hear you speak that out now, that this is the case, right? Uh, especially in the kingdom. When when that kingdom is at war, it's all hands on deck. All hands on deck. And I think for this battle of the ages, uh, we, we can't afford to leave people out. We can't afford to to just, you know, say, you know what? That's I'm going to let that person do all the work. I'm going to just do me. I'm going to mind my business. Because as you said before, we're under attack whether you recognize it or not. Um, so with that being said, with this book especially, because I, I love how it takes you through that in a very uh, key way, and we're looking forward to the uh, volume two, right? I know you said you're going to do a, a whole nother series after this, so I'm excited for it. But as we step into it, one thing that you said mm -hmm. that uh, was really key was the fact that we all have a part, right? We're all called to be uh, soldiers in this battle. One thing that Dennis Bosazier said when he was a guest here, uh, he said that the moment that we're uh, in the kingdom, the moment we're born again, we're all ambassadors, right? What is it about this instant transformation that is apparently happening in the kingdom, right? When we're born again, when we're born into this kingdom, what is it, you know, because again, I don't know I have this power, right? I don't know That's that right. I have this responsibility. That's right. So what do I need to do Seeing as how I'm born into this kingdom again, and somehow right away I'm a soldier, right away I'm an ambassador. What does that look like for me if I'm fresh <laughs> in this whole thing? It looks scary at first, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah. You know, Jesus makes the statement that you must be born again. He said you must be born again before you can see the kingdom of God. Yeah. See, it's all about the kingdom. He yeah. said you must be born again of the water and of the spirit before you can enter to the kingdom of God. Then he tells us we need to pray that the kingdom of God would come. Then he says that uh, to go out and preach the good news of the kingdom. Well, what's the good news of the kingdom? The good news of the kingdom. What's the good news of the kingdom? The good news of the kingdom is that God rules. Mm. Jesus is the king. And we're citizens in that kingdom when we get born again. Yeah. And we have been duped because I wrote this book. One reason was because uh, even when you start out reading the very first chapter and the purpose of the book, I wrote this book because in my journey, I'm almost 70. In my journey, um, I spent a lot of time wondering who I was. Hmm. I spent a lot of time wondering 
why I was here. Um, couldn't understand why I did things the way that I did things. So I started pressing in, trying to figure out what this whole church thing was about. Because I was raised up in church. My grandmother on up just raised me from a little child. But church was a social club for me. And church was a place to gather to, to sing. And church was a place I had to go uh, because I couldn't go to the movies um, unless I went to church. My grandmother would give me money to go to church um, when I got to church to go to the movies. But then something began to shift by the time I went to college. And I realized, wait a minute, there's more to this book, yeah. the, the, the Bible, than just, you know, something just to read. And, and, and I realized, especially when I got challenged about my faith and whether I was saved, um, I realized that most believers don't know much about the Word of God. So I started studying. I started reading. I started studying the Word of God. And as it began to grow in the Word, um, I've, God's always kind of had me on the cutting edge. I started saying, they were, well, if they cast out demons, God, why can't we? Well, Lord, if they if they were raised the dead, I come, I come we can. But if they walked in the supernatural power of God, why aren't we walking in? If they demonstrated this kind of power, why aren't we? So I began to question, yeah. you know, what was in the word of God and what I saw in reality. Mm. And then I realized that the problem wasn't the word. Yeah. The problem was us that we hadn't been trained, that we hadn't been taught. You don't know what you don't know. Somebody's got to teach you these things. Very true. And, and, and the Holy Spirit wants us to know he is the ultimate teacher. And, and so I just started reading, start reading books by other believers. Um, over the years, 100 years old, you know, Watchman Nee and Derek Prince and you know people like that, Kenneth Hagin, and seeing what God taught them. God, if you taught them that, what well, you know, what is it that I don't know? How, how did they learn that? And then I begin to understand that the Holy Spirit will actually begin if you are looking for God to grow you up in the things of God. The Holy Spirit will lead you to the right people, mm -hmm. the right places, so that it will spark something in you to make you want to study, to make you want to grow, make you want to press in. I started doing that, and then I got arrested by the Holy Spirit on this kingdom thing. And I remember growing up, hearing about kingdom every now and then, and we're in the kingdom of God. But God began to show me that that meant more. That was more than just a word. That there is a rule of God yeah. that he wanted to bring to our lives. And then that rule, he wanted us to bring that to the affairs of me and the things that we were doing in the earth. And that he wanted every believer to do that. Yeah. So I got very passionate about making sure that I taught the people that were around me. But then I realized something. We need the leaders to get this. Because we got leaders in these congregations that have hundreds and hundreds of people that follow them. And if the leaders don't teach them about kingdom, they'll never learn it on their own. Yeah. So that's why I wrote the book. Hmm. And that's why I do kingdom conversations. And that's why I do Kingdom Builders Summit. That's why we started a kingdom alliance. Why? So that the kingdom of God can be lifted up yeah. in this dispensation. You know, it's... Um... It's great to see firsthand, one. And then two, I know for myself, having <clears throat> conversations, right? Because I think that's the really important key is that we can all have kingdom conversations. And as we talk about what is this experience supposed to be like and the point of a kingdom awakening, it's all a kingdom awakening. It's all about us knowing our part uh, in the battle of the ages and understanding that, you know what? This conversation could be had by anybody at any time and should probably be a little bit more of a conversation of what we do on a daily basis as a way for us to really press out what kingdom looks like, right? Does our language match kingdom? 
And I think that's one thing that we mentioned um, at some point with uh, Dr. Chris Hardy of, hey, every kingdom has a language, right? Are we speaking it? Can you can you prove that you are really, you know, from the Caribbean, right? So if you're from this particular country, can you speak Patois, right? That's how people are going to say, I don't know if you really are or not. And so it's interesting to see as we press out this kingdom conversation, this kingdom awakening, what that looks like for us to do. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of it because it's been transformative even for myself, especially for me. Uh, being here, at least in this chair for the past couple of weeks. And also thank you just for your dedication, right? For your consistent pressing this out, for your preaching, your teaching, your moments where we, me and you just have kingdom conversations off camera, not just here, right? I want everybody to know this ain't just on a set and we just talking like this. Uh, but even as guests come on, we have conversations before we go on air and they talk about the conversations with you conversations with you as leaders about, hey, this kingdom thing is important, right? Not just important for you to teach and preach in your own house, but for us to teach and preach as a city. As you speak with leaders, and you just brought this up yourself about, hey, leaders need to know this. What is it about your conversations with leaders that you believe is different? Because we all, we all have moments where we network, where we talk with each other, where we hang out and in and, and, and rooms with people who do what we do. What is it about your kingdom conversations that are not on camera that are bringing people together, right? Because I think we can all learn from that. What are you doing that's so different in this season? I don't know. Um, <laughs> trusting God, actually, because yeah. what happens is I, I am in a lot of different circles. But I always talk about the kingdom. Faith comes by hearing. And I'll talk about the kingdom one way or the other. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'll make sure that the kingdom message is on the table. I'll make sure, and, you know, and, and I'm bold about it. You got to be bold when you start uh, sharing, especially with leaders who, who know the word of God. Mm -hmm. And what I have found is that, uh, and, and I'm around some people that are scholars, that are doctors, that have, yeah. have you know, great knowledge about the word of God. Um, but I don't let that intimidate me because I know what I'm what I'm talking about when it comes to the kingdom, and whenever I start talking to the talking about the kingdom, I've never had one of them say, "Well, that ain't true. That ain't in the word," because we've all read these things in the Word of God. Yeah. And so, what I do, what the Holy Spirit helps me to do, is share it in a way where people, leaders, are saying, "Okay." Yeah, I never heard it that way. And I even tell it, well, do you disagree with the fact that Jesus said we're supposed to preach the kingdom? Well, no. Well, then why don't we preach it? Hmm. Uh, do you disagree with the fact that Jesus told us that the reason he came was to preach the kingdom of God? No, because there's scriptures on all of this. Then, then why don't we do it? What we've done is we have uh, allowed ourselves to fall into a place in the body of Christ of being more concerned about people's salvation mm -hmm. than we should be. Don't get me wrong. Paul made the statement that I preach the kingdom of God and I teach those things concerning Christ. I mean, I, I would I would challenge everybody in here to read the, the chapter where we move from church to kingdom. Mm -hmm. And and when we talk about uh, the difference in the preaching of the gospel of Christ and the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, it shouldn't have been either or. It should be both and. Yeah. And because it hasn't been both and, most believers don't understand kingdom. They understand salvation. Yeah. They don't understand kingdom including the leaders. Yeah. They don't understand kingdom. So God allows me to be in circles where I can talk about it and point you to the scripture. I challenge, I challenge every believer, every believer to read through the New Testament and make it a point to look up the word, the kingdom of God, and just read every scripture where it talks about the kingdom of God. 
you would be amazed. Mm -hmm. How many scriptures talk about the kingdom of God, the rule of God? I'm talking about this in the New Testament. And you cannot go through the scriptures and read about the kingdom of God and come away thinking that you shouldn't be preaching that. It'll change your life. It's uh, it's interesting to hear that boldness, right? And, and you can be bold when you you know you're right, right? And the concept of this is what I've read, this is what I've studied, and it's difficult to walk away with anything other than this conclusion. And I think that sometimes we muddy the water, right? Because we have so we we do we have a lot of doctrines, we have a lot of different teachings, right? Yes. I know that when it comes time to bring people together <laughs> and you get certain folk in the room together they start arguing about what means what does it mean to really be saved right is baptism important is it not important um you know uh, speaking in tongues all there are lots <laughs> of different things that we all walk away with with our, our different priorities i'll never forget a conversation that i had with uh with troy and he was doing some things to cross worship and there was a conversation of hey after we're done with this huge worship night with a bunch of kids and bringing people together. The concept of no matter what you what you believe, as long as you believe that Christ really lived, really died and rose again, we can come together. But when it came time to do the whole invitation at the end for kids, um, he would tell me stories of how certain leaders would be like, hey, so what did you do with this one kid when they walked up? It's like, well, we went through this process and so on and so forth. Another one would be like, well, that's not right. But well, what do you mean it's not right? Well, that kid's not really saved because you didn't do this right. But well, what do you mean the kid's not really saved because? You're... And so we get into this whole debate, uh, really a debacle if we're really honest about it, because we're so inconsistent. If I'm hearing correctly, if we, when it comes to the kingdom message, if we just stick to the scriptures, we'll be able to really press this thing out uh, with accuracy, without division, without heads. Um, you know, clashing on a regular basis. My my question is, oh, wait, no, so not quite. I, I, it's interesting that you talked about the various things that people argue about. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to debate about whether you get baptized in Jesus' name or whether you get totally immersed in water or sprinkled or <laughs> whether, whether there is uh, the supernatural power and, you know, we get into arguments about all of that, and we debate about those various things, whether there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers or not. But one thing that's clear, mm -hmm. crystal clear, is that when you read the New Testament, you cannot deny the kingdom of God. Yeah. What is there to argue about? There is a kingdom of God. And Jesus said, preach that kingdom of God. But I preach Christ. I don't deny that. But why do you preach Christ? Mm. He came to save us, to deliver us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. So everything points to the kingdom. So we can debate, we can argue. But you know what I found when it comes to the kingdom of God message? It speaks for itself. When you read the scriptures, the kingdom of God is so clear that it speaks for itself. And all we need to do is what it says. Yeah. That's good. Maybe that's that's the answer. Maybe we can all be bold in that and step into it. Because I, I do believe that um, we should at least be on somewhat of the same page. Absolutely. And my hope is that as we press out this kingdom awakening, that we can demonstrate what you've demonstrated, which is coming together, working in teams, right? We have covenant with everyone from EITI and LITI to many leaders within this region and people who've come together instead of being uh, divided by doctrine, right? I've seen just from in being in, in relationship and being around and seeing the conversations, that this kingdom, message, this kingdom awakening, it strips away all the extra stuff and it puts Amen. us together in a Amen. way that we can't be anything other than one. And so I appreciate that. Amen. I, I appreciate your time today. Uh, that is going to be a wrap for us this week. We're going to see you again. 
Uh, and we're going to see Brother Jerry again. We're so excited to have you back. Thank you so much, sir. We love you. Thank we you. love you. We miss you. Um, and we're excited to have you back and in great health and with us in our presence again. So tune in next week for another Kingdom Awakening um, conversation, a Kingdom conversation centered around Kingdom Awakening and what your part, not just our part, not just the leader's part, but your part in the Battle of the Ages. And one thing I would say is, and I would challenge you, one part that you have is to study to show yourself approved unto God, workmen who need not be ashamed. Study the New Testament around kingdom. See what you find. It will be an awakening for you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Bless you, man of God.